Hey everybody, it's Karen with Food and Family. I am in the mood to bake a cake today, and this is one that I've been wanting to bake for you for a while now, and I'm just now doing it, and it is a green tomato cake. Some of you may have seen it, and some of you might not have, but if you have, you know how delicious it is, and you think green tomatoes in a cake, hmm, but trust me, it works, and it ends up tasting like apple. It is absolutely delicious. So, let's get started. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm going to start with spraying my pan with the baking spray. So, we're done with that. I'm just going to sit it back here. So in my mixer, I'm going to add two six sticks of room temperature butter. Now, my butter is pretty soft. It's been out all morning. So I want to get that in there. And I'm going to add to that two and one half cups of white granulated sugar. Two and a half cups, I said. I want to look at my recipe to make sure I get it right. You know, baking is pretty precise. That's one and two. So that's two and one half cups of sugar. Now, I had Pop go down to my little raised garden beds here and Pick me some green tomatoes for this cake. And they are absolutely beautiful. I want you to look at here. Now, these are heirloom tomatoes. They're Cherokee purple. But I had him pick them while they were green. So I think they're going to be great. So let's start this off slowly. I'm sure you can't see down in that bowl. But I'm trying to angle my mix where you can see what I'm doing to it. So I want to get this creamed together fairly well. So give me a minute. Let me get this cream together. Then I'm going to come back after it's done and I'll show you what we're going to do next, okay? Okay, this butter and sugar is creamed together really good and it is just beautiful. Now I have three eggs that I've gone ahead and cracked into my bowl and they're at room temperature. And in in baking, room temperature, eggs, uh, milk, anything used in like that, it just does better when it's at room temperature. So I always try to think about that. And sometimes I don't think about it ahead of time to set them out, but I like to. But I tell you what I've done, if I forget to set my eggs out, I get me a bowl of pretty warm water and I set my eggs in there for just a few minutes, not long, and it'll knock that chill off of them and the third one okay so let's get rid of that okay so while that's mixing i'm going to go over here to a separate bowl and i am going to get my flour and our good spices together here and i have got three cups of all-purpose flour Now this is so delicious and I have not had this cake in so long. Don't pack your flour down in your measuring cup when you measure it out. I just go down, bring it up, and then level it off. Okay, so to this flour, we want to add our spices. Now I'm going to use apple pie spice and i'm going to use one and one quarter teaspoons of apple pie spice one and one quarter now if you want to make your own you can it's simple cinnamon nutmeg some allspice um you can add ginger but i'm going to add ginger to this mixture and I'm going to use half of a teaspoon 
of ground ginger. Ground ginger, ginger to me is just one of those warm, comforting spices. I just love ginger. Okay, so we're going to stir those together and that'll soften up this flour, get the little lumps out of it. So make sure I've got everything in here. Baking powder. I need some baking powder. And that will be, I'm sorry y'all, I haven't made this in a while and I'm having to look at my recipe. I need one teaspoon of baking powder. Now, make sure your baking powder, any of your leavenings, baking powder, baking soda, make sure that they're fresh when you use them. And I need a teaspoon of salt. I don't think I'm going to use quite a teaspoon of salt. Um, I think that's just a little too much. For me, it is. So I think I'm going to cut it down to half of a teaspoon. And there we go. We got our salt in. Just love my spice drawer and I've got everything right here by me. Okay, so I'm stirring this up. But going ahead and stirring it up like this, I get my spices, all those delicious flavors spread throughout that flour. So when I mix it up, it's all mixed in there. It says, tells me to put this in my butter mixture half a cup at a time. So I'm gonna get it started on low. I'm gonna start some first. And I'm just gonna put this in half a cup at a time. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna finish this up, okay? Okay, y'all, I have got this beautiful batter mixed up. And look you here how beautiful. It's thick batter. It's thick batter. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to stir in. You want to do these by hand. You don't want to break them up. I want one cup of golden raisins. And if you're not a raisin fan, I'm not either. But like I said about the green tomatoes, it works in this case. I hope you'd at least give it a try or think about trying it. Okay, so one cup of golden raisins. And we need two and one half cups of green tomatoes. Now, I started dicing them when I was waiting for that batter to mix up. So I've just kind of done little small dices. I hope you can see that size. And... Um, so I'm going to do two. I don't think I've got quite two and a half cups right here, but we're going to see. One. Two. So where's my half of a cup? Hey, I did pretty good measuring that out, y'all. That is just about perfect measure. Okay, two and one half cups of green tomatoes and one cup of golden raisins. Now, we're gonna stir this in by hand. And like I said, this is a really thick batter. So you're gonna have to go deep down in that bowl and pull it up and get it in there. So let me get this finished and I'll be back. Okay, so I have this just about all the way mixed in, but I wanna put some pecans. Now you can use walnuts. I'm choosing to use pecans. I like walnuts, but I have pecans. And I want one cup of chopped, chopped pecans and or put whatever you want. You know, if you want a little bit less, you go for it. Uh, if you want walnuts, do it. Put your nut of choice. My ha mine happens to be pecans, but that's what I keep. 
So, but I want to chop these pecans. I don't want dust. I don't want huge pieces either. So I'm just going to give them kind of a rough, I'm going to say a medium rough chop, if that makes sense to you. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Let's see if we've got a cup. If we've got too many, that's okay. I'll put it in the freezer. I did good again. I'm proud of myself. Looky here. We're going to put those right, right in there. And we're going to go back to mixing this up. I've almost got it completely mixed up. So we're going to take this and then we're going to put it into this bunt pan. And I'm only going to fill it up. I think we might get it all in here. I'm not going to fill it to the top. I only want it like three quarters of the way. I need something to help me here. Let me get this in here. Instead of you sitting here watching me <laughs> dipping all of this and uh, I'll be back and show you this before we put it in the oven, okay? Look at this cake. Now, I'm ready to put this in the oven. Now, as I told you, we have our oven preheated to 350 degrees. We want to bake it for 70 to 75 minutes. And I'm going to set a timer. Alexa, set a timer for 70 minutes. One hour and 10 minutes. Down. And then I'll check it with a skewer. I use a skewer. And if it comes out clean, it's done. But that's not all we're going to do. We're going to make a brown butter cream cheese frosting. So I'm going to get this cleaned up. And then I'm going to start that frosting because the butter's got to sit for a little bit. So y'all give me a minute. Let me clean this up. I'm going to go ahead and get my butter browned. And then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it, okay? Y'all, I went ahead and browned my butter. Now, this nutty, buttery, delicious smell is amazing. Now, what I did is I had one and one half sticks of butter, and I put it in my pan, and I put it on the stove on very, very low. I wanted to make sure I turned my stove off. And, um... Just let it simmer, the butter melted, and then just whisk it, stir it frequently because you don't want it to burn. And what's going to happen is you're going to get this golden brown nutty smell and look to it, and it is going to be delicious. So I'm going to let it sit here for... I don't know, 15 minutes or so because I want it to cool off a little bit. Then I'm going to put it in the fridge and we're going to let it solidify again. So it'll need to stay in there probably an hour or so. So we're going to let that work while our cake is baking. So, but when it's ready, I want to come back and show you how we make this frosting. I have taken this cake out of the oven, and if y'all could just smell it, oh my goodness, it smells so delicious. But now we've got to make our frosting. So, remember the butter that I browned? I put it in the refrigerator, and I let it solidify again. So, I'm going to put this in to the mixing bowl and I'm going to add one eight ounce package of cream cheese that has been softened. You want to get every one of those little bits. That's where so much flavor is. Okay. And I need this, don't I? I want to put 
<laughs> if I can get it to work. And I want to cream these two together. And I want them to get smooth and combined really well. This is going to be so delicious. And I can't wait to try it on this cake. Okay, now to that, again, I'm going to be looking at my recipe. I want to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Y'all know I love my vanilla bean paste. And I'm just going to pour. If you get a little bit more, it won't hurt anything. It's all good. Okay, and then I want some salt, and it says half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to put uh, about a quarter of a teaspoon. I think that'd be good. Now, to this, I want to add three and a half to four cups of powdered sugar, and I'm going to do it in small increments but I'm going to turn this down. I don't want to wear it, and I don't want it all over my kitchen. Start slow and get it going. And that was about a half a cup. So we're going to do another half a cup. So let me get this mixed up and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what this looks like, okay? Okay, now I have added three and a half, right at four cups of powdered sugar. Now, it's a little bit thick, so I'm gonna thin it down just a little bit with some milk. And I'm just gonna start with one tablespoon of milk and see if that gets it where I want it. You want it to where you can spread it, but you don't want it running off your cake. And I'm going to check this, because I think we might be there. A little bit more. And I think... That's going to do it right there. Yeah, this is, you can see those specks of that brown butter and the specks from those vanilla beans, from that vanilla bean paste. This is just a beautiful, beautiful frosting. Let's get this cake frosted. <laughs> Let's move this out of the way. I want you to be able to see every thing because i want to try to move this closer to you there we go now let's get this frosting oh it is so soft and pillowy this <laughs> i am just so i'm going to take a close up picture of this so you can see it and i will post it in this video somewhere and i want you to see how beautiful this frosting is with all these specks of butter and vanilla it is just gorgeous you want to get down in here also Look here. Can you see how pretty that is? Oh, it's a little heavy. I can't hold it up very well. I see a little spot I want to put some. Right in here. Okay. You know what the best part is? We're going to slice into it. Because I want you to see what the inside looks like. Give me a second and let me get a knife and a plate, okay? You ready to cut it? 
Let's go right here. Oh my goodness. Looky there. Looky there. Let's see if I can get this on here. I want you to see it just like that. Look at that cake. You see those tomatoes and those pecans and the raisins. Oh my goodness gracious. And we left a tomato behind. <laughs> yeah, it's a tomato. I know it is because I put it in there. But I promise you, you will think this is a, an apple. Let's get us a good bite. With the frosting, we're going to have some of that frosting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All I need now is to go make me a cup of coffee and go sit back and enjoy this piece of cake. Now, I certainly hope you will make this cake so you can enjoy it as well. You see in there? And I hope you will. And I hope you'll let me know if you do. But I also want you to think of something. Think of my cookbook. And I hope you're thinking about going out and getting one. And I'll list the link below where you can go to my website and order them. Now, it will take you out of my website and into the printer. But I promise you, it is a secure site. And they will take your order and they will ship it to you. And they're real quick turnaround. Thanks, everybody. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And come back and see me again. Because I certainly enjoy having each and every one of you with me. I'll see you soon.